Symptoms that present in the brain are a function of where in the brain the problem is more than what the underlying problem is. So for example, a brain tumor in a particular part of the brain might present with the exact same symptoms as a blood vessel problem like a developing stroke uh, or a bleed in the brain. And in the old days before we had very good imaging, uh, all we knew immediately from interviewing the patient and looking at the symptoms were the location in the brain. These days, most patients get imaged very early on, so we know, regardless of the type of neurologic presentation, that there is a blood vessel problem going on. And once we're, the patient is on that pathway, they fairly early get sent for an angiogram. So the presenting symptoms can encompass any potential neurologic problem, from weakness on one side of the body, a sensory change, a language change, uh, a change in consciousness. It really depends on which set of blood vessels going to which part of the brain, more than the particular problem that's being caused. I would say, too, that uh, the non-invasive imaging is quite good now at looking at the blood vessels themselves. So we have techniques like MRA, which is an angiogram done with an MRI scanner, and CTA, which is an angiogram done with a CT scanner, that give us excellent pictures of the blood vessels today. And so, whereas most patients would go straight to catheter angiography previously, nowadays it's mostly patients who've already been pre-screened with non-invasive imaging, and we're fairly certain that either we'll be treating with a catheter angiogram, or that we need very, very high resolution pictures to help the surgeons in planning their treatments. So those are, that's the subset of patients that goes on to get angiography.